Welcome to Expert 360 online classes. So today I'll be dealing with uh, basic electronics, the basic electronics. I'll be starting from the beginning, that is from the atomic structure itself I'll be starting and I'll just tell you uh, the semiconductors. I'll just uh, define conductors, semiconductors, insulators, then uh, power bias, reverse bias of a PN junction diode, then go for the VI characteristics of the diodes. So, I will be dealing with the such portions over here now. Okay. So, now let us go for the atomic structure. So, in the lower classes, you have studied in 8, 9, 10, uh, plus 1, plus 2 levels, you have studied. Uh, in plus 2 levels, also, you have studied nuclei. Uh, one chapter you have nuclei where you studied again uh, Bose atomic model, uh, Rutherford's atomic model, and Thompson's atomic model. So, you know the uh, disadvantages of Thomson's atomic model or why you did not accept that Thomson's atomic model and then came the Rutherford's atomic model there also you know why you are not accepted. Anyway, I am not going to go deep into it. I uh, will come directly to Bose atomic model and we will start from there. So, the Bose atomic model. So, the atom consists of the nuclei which is the center part which consists of protons and neutrons. Protons are positively charged and neutrons neutral. The whole mass of the atom is concentrated in the nucleus. So, the nucleus as a whole is positively charged because the protons is having positively charged and the neutrons are neutral. And the electrons which has negligible mass has negative charge will be revolving around the nucleus, will be revolving around the nucleus in a fixed orbit. So, it will be revolving around the nucleus in a fixed orbit. It neither loses energy nor gain energy when it is revolving in that particular orbit, but it loses or gains energy when it jumps from one orbit to next orbit, one orbit to another orbit. It is going to gain or lose energy. Okay. And the maximum number of electrons an orbit can accommodate is 2 n square electrons. So, you have 2 n square electrons in each orbit, 2 n square electrons. That is the first orbit, the first orbit will consist of 2 into 1 square which is equal to 2. The second orbit it is 2 into 2 square, 2 square is 4 into 2 that is 8. The next 2 into 3 square. 3 square is 9 into 2 that is 18 and so on it goes on. So, if I draw one more orbit, the second orbit it consists of 8 electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 electrons in the second orbit. But the outermost orbit can consist of only maximum of 8 electrons. Okay? And if the outermost orbit has 8 electrons or 2 electrons, the outermost orbit is going to have 8 electrons or 2 electrons, it is called as a stable state or inert gas configuration. Okay? So, helium is the only one atom, only one element, I am sorry, element, which is having the outermost orbit 2 electrons and has attained inert gas configuration. All other inert gases are going to have the outermost orbit 8 electrons. These are the things which you study in chemistry. In physics also you need, when you study atomic physics and all you need it. Now, I am not going to go deeper into it. Now, if uh, it has not attained a stable state, it will try to become into a stable state. by uh, transferring of electron or by sharing of electrons, either by sharing of electrons or transfer of electrons. That means, suppose there is an element having the atomic number A as atomic number, it is a number of protons. So, atomic number as something left, atomic number as left. So, 2 8 1. So, this is the first orbit, second orbit, third orbit and B it has got 2 7. 
So you have an element A which is going to have the configuration 281 and B is going to have a configuration 27. You are studying the lower classes of all those things. So what is going to happen is if this one is taken out from that then this is going to have an inert gate configuration and that removed one if it comes to this one B then this is also going to have an inert gate configuration and it is going to attain stable state. So what is going to do is A is going to lose one so it is not as a donor and B is going to accept one B minus and these both has become into a stable state. A is a donor and B is an acceptor. So there is a high attractive force between A and B. This type of attractive force is called as bonding. So what do you mean by bonding? It is attractive force between two unstable atoms. So A and B are two unstable and there is an attractive force between A and B. So that type of attractive force between two unstable atoms are called as uh, ionic bonding. Clear? So ionic bonding not an ionic bonding it is called as bonding okay bonding so i am coming to ion this is ionic bonding because transfer of electrons are taking place so he called it as an ionic bonding so what do you mean by bonding first of all we will see what is bonding it is an attractive force between two unstable atoms and here you see ionic bonding okay because transfer of electrons are takes so the bonding in which transfer of electron takes place we call it as ionic bonding now sharing of electrons takes place in some atoms and it comes to a stable state so that you call it as uh, covalent bondings. So I have a germanium the outermost orbit consists of 4 ok here another one germanium germanium itself here another one germanium outermost consists of 4 here another one germanium here also the outermost orbit 4 here next germanium the outermost orbit 4. So, this is going to attain a this germane is going to share with this one this germane is going to share with this one and this one and this germanium you see in this germanium due to the sharing with other germanium atoms it has attained stable state the outermost orbit consists of 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8. So, this type of sharing you call it as or this type of sharing we call it as covalent bonding the bonding in which sharing of atoms takes place we call it as covalent bonding ok and this one transfer of electron takes place we call it as a ionic bonding or you can also call it as metallic bondings. So, you have now you study two types of bonding and you know what is bonding also uh, these are things you have studied in chemistry and in physics also I think you have studied in nuclear chapter nuclear that is when you have studied for class 12th class 12th portions you have studied that ok. So, in this uh, covalent bonding we have seen sharing of atoms sharing of uh, electrons takes place and ionic bonding we have seen uh, transfer of electrons takes place all these takes place in the outermost orbit ok. It takes in the outermost orbit which is called as a valence orbit clear it takes in the outermost orbit which is called it as a valence orbit. Now, suppose I am taking uh, the orbit first orbit the energy is also I am going to take for the first orbit. So, I will be taking first band, second band, third band, fourth band, valence band, but that is not the outermost band, conduction band, that is the outermost band. That means there is some difference between a, a band, valence band and the conduction band. You have to see what is the difference is. In valence band, it is the outermost orbit. But the band when you are coming into the bands, energy is also concerned with that. When you are coming to that, the outermost band is a conduction band. So, the outermost orbit is the valence orbit, but the outermost band is a conduction band. That means in conduction band, you do not have any orbit, but in valence band, you have the orbit, which is the outermost orbit. So, in the valence band, the electrons are going to revolve in that orbit. It is not free, but in conduction band you do not have any orbit, so the electrons are free to move. Clear? It is going to have a random motion inside. So, that is the conduction band. So, the conduction band contains plenty of free electrons. Now, we will go to 
Uh, so you now have understood what is the difference between the conduction band and the balance band. In balance band, the electrons are not free to move because it revolves in the orbit. But in conduction band, the electrons are free to move and you don't have any orbit. That is the difference between a conduction band and a balance band. So free electrons means it is the electrons in the conduction band. You should call it as free electrons. The free electron means that all electrons are in the conduction band. Now I will take three different materials. So in the first material, let us look something like this. This is a conduction band and the balance band. The next material, I'll go. This is a conduction band and this is a balance band. And in the next material, I'll go. So this is a conduction band and this is a balance band. So in this material you see you have the balance band, you have the electrons which are revolving in the orbits, it is not free to move and in the conduction band you have again three electrons, it does not have any orbit. Since these two are going to overlap each other, the electrons can easily jump into the conduction band, okay, it is overlapping each other. So overlapping each other, the conduction band and the valence band is going to overlap each other. This is a conduction band line, this is a conduction band line and this is a valence band is going to overlap. So the electrons are free to move. So the naturally the conduction band will contain 20 of free electrons. But you see in this, there is a small gap between the conduction band and the valence band. Okay, there is a small gap between the conduction band and the valence band, this gap. See over here. So the electrons in the conduction band is very less because it should attain some energy to jump from balance band to conduction band which is about one electron volt. That means if an electron attains one electron volt then it can jump into the conduction band which means the conduction band contains three electrons which has attained one electron volt and this gap we call it as a forbidden gap this gap we call it as a forbidden gap okay forbidden gap so how you can attain this one electron volt it can be by photo energy that is the light energy to thermal energy that is a heat energy 3 the field energy by applying a battery or something like that and the fourth one is secondary emission either of using these four methods this material can attain an energy of 1 volt so that the electrons in the valence band can jump into the conduction band. Okay. Now we come to this. You have the electrons revolving in the valence orbit. You have the gap, the forbidden gap, which is more than 3 electron volt. The forbidden gap. is more than 3 electron volt. Therefore, it is impossible for an electron to jump from valence band to conduction band and the conduction band contain no electrons. It is empty of 3 electrons. Clear? Any doubt in these 3 materials? See, once more I will tell you, the conduction band and the valence band overlap each other. Therefore, the electrons in the valence band can easily jump into the conduction band and the conduction band contain plenty of free electrons. Okay? Now, in this, there is a small gap between conduction band and the valence band which you call it as a forbidden gap. Therefore, the electrons which has attained one electron volt energy can jump into the conduction band. And this one electron volt energy can be attained by photo energy, thermal energy, field. It can be a field energy. Okay, field. That is a battery. Field energy or secondary emission. And this is the third material. The forbidden gap is more than 3 electron volt. 
so it is impossible for an electron to jump from balance band to conduction band and the conduction band contain no electrons or it is empty of free electrons clear now let us apply a potential difference so see so see the conduction band is over here and the electrons are free to move okay that means the electrons is going to have a random motion inside it it is going to have a random motion inside it and the net average velocity of those electrons will be equal to zero now if i want to move this in a particular direction i'm going to apply a potential difference across the two ends of this so once i put i apply a potential difference in order to apply a potential difference i'll connect a battery of a voltage v v volts so i'll apply potential difference of v volt then what is going to happen these electron free electrons are attracted by the positive terminal of the battery and the electrons are going to flow in this particular direction that means a current is going to flow in this particular direction in the opposite direction to the flow of electrons that means there is a flow of current or that means that material is going to conduct current but in this one i'm going to apply the same v volt a current is going to flow the electrons are going to flow and the current is going to flow which is equal to i2 it is less in number with that of i1 the current which is flowing in i2 is very less compared to that of i1 it is just because the number of free electrons is very less therefore less current less electron flow and therefore the current is also very less that is semi passage of current now in this if i put apply a potential of difference of v volt there are no free electrons therefore i3 is equal to zero clear this type of materials which conducts current you call this conductors you call this as conductors this type of material in which only a passive flow of current takes place you call it as semiconductors this type of material where there is no flow of current you call it as insulators clear so now i have come into conductors semiconductors and insulators now let us see what is a conductor what is a semiconductor and what is an insulator okay in conductors i'll tell according to energy band okay and now this is the energy band diagrams i have drawn so according to energy band diagram the in conductors the conduction band and the valence band overlap each other therefore the electrons in the valence band can jump into the conduction band and the conduction band contains plenty of free electrons okay now according to energy band diagram for semiconductors there is a small gap between the conduction band and the valence band which we call it as a forbidden gap which is about 1 electron volt this one electron volt can be attained by photo energy thermal energy field energy or secondary emission okay that means the electrons in the conduction band has already attained one electron volt energy the third one according to energy band diagram there is a large gap between the conduction band and the valence band which is a forbidden gap which is more than 3 electron volt therefore it is impossible for an electron to jump into the conduction band and the conduction band is empty of free electrons okay now let us come as the process of conduction in conductors according to conduction theory i will tell you conductors conductors are materials which conducts current semiconductors are materials which conducts current partially insulators are materials which does not conduct current so if suppose someone ask you what do you mean, get me the difference between conductors semiconductors and insulators what do you will tell so i can tell according to the conduction theory as well as due to the uh, band theory so i'll tell that you just listen to it so the conduction band conductors in conductors the conduction band and the valence band overlap each other therefore the valence band electrons in the valence band can easily jump into the conduction band and the conduction band contains plenty of free electrons therefore when a potential difference of v volt is applied a current flows so conductors are material which conducts current clear
Now, let us come to semiconductors. There is a small gap between the conduction band and balance band, which we call the four button gap, which is about one electron volt. Therefore, one electron volt energy is required for an electron to jump from balance band to conduction band, and this can be attained by photo energy, thermal energy, field energy, or secondary emission. Therefore, the conduction band contains less number of free electrons as compared to that of conductors. Therefore, the current flow, when a potential difference of V volt is applied, the current flow is partial or it conducts semiconductors or material which conducts current partially. Insulators. There is a large gap between the conduction and balance band. The forbidden gap is more than 3 electron volt. Therefore, it is impossible for an electron to jump from balance band to conduction band. And the conduction band contains no free electrons. Therefore, when a potential difference of V volt is applied, no current flows. Therefore, insulators are material which does not conduct current. Clear? Now, I have taught you what is the difference between conduction band and valence band and what is the difference between conductors, semiconductors and insulators. So, now let us go to uh, semiconductors. The conductors portion I have taken before in electrical, basic electrical, you can see the videos of basic electrical in that I have taken and uh, next I will go for in the electronics portion, I will go for uh, semiconductors. Okay. And for more videos, you can uh, uh, see the description there, in description there uh, we are given the link of Expert 360, the app which is there in the Play Store. You can download the Play Store and register for it and you can uh, see the, uh, the rest of the videos in electronics over there. Okay, so the main questions which is asked in that portion is, one is uh, conduction band, differentiate conduction band and valence band. Okay, uh, then comes the next question is uh, differentiate between conductors, semiconductors and insulators. Now in the electronics portion, we will have to study now semiconductors. So we will go in the semiconductors portion. Okay, so semiconductors, semiconductors. So, usually we will be dealing with germanium and silicon. Okay, germanium and silicon. So, germanium the atomic number is 32, silicon <coughs> it is 14. So, the number of electrons will be 32 and in silicon it will be 14. Now, let us draw the electronic configuration of it. So, you have the you have the nucleus. protons, neutrons, the electrons will be revolving around the nucleus. So, I will just write the configuration. Instead of drawing it, I will just write the configuration. You all know it. I will put it as K, L, M, N. So, uh, 32. That means in the first orbit, we will be having 2, I do not K, L, 8. Next. 18, so 18 plus 2, 20, 28, you need 4. So, in the outermost orbit, we will be having 4. Okay. Similarly, silicon, K, L, M, N. So, it will be 2, 8, 8 plus 2, 10, the rest is 4. So, these are the electronic configuration of this. So, the outermost orbit consists of 4 electrons outermost orbit that is a valence orbit okay consists of four electrons now what happens is i'll take germanium okay i'll take germanium the outermost orbit four electrons now it combines with another one germanium because this is the unstable state, it has to come into a stable state. I have another one germany over here, another one germany over here. Now, sharing of electrons takes place in the outermost orbit. See, so naturally, this germanium will be having another one over here, like this. In a similar manner.
here also will be having so let us see this one see so all these germaniums are going to uh, share the electrons and going to be in the stable state so once it is in a stable state you don't have any free electrons so the conduction band is empty of free electrons you don't have any electrons in the conduction band what does it mean if the conduction band doesn't contain any electrons that means it is going to have a property of insulator there is no free electron for conduction so this is the condition at absolute zero okay so this is the condition germanium is going to have at absolute zero temperature so at absolute zero semiconductors act as insulators this is one of the important point you have to remember at absolute zero germanium or silicon or any semiconductor is going to act as a insulator okay now i am going to bring it to room temperature so once i bring it to the room temperature naturally i'm going to get the photo energy that is a light energy and thermal energy that is a heat energy what happens is the bonds are going to get broken and the free electrons are going to jump into the conduction band the electrons are going to jump into the conduction band and you have free electrons but very less in number so you have the conduction band you have the conduction band and you have the valence band this is the forbidden gap forbidden gap i put as fg the forbidden gap fg which is about approximately equal to 1 electron volt the valence band you have electrons in the conduction band you have very less number of electrons so if an electron has to jump from valence band to conduction band you need one electron volt of energy and that can be attained by i told in the last class itself photo energy thermal energy field energy or secondary emission and the electrons the free electrons in the conduction band has attained one electron volt energy so when i give a potential difference by applying a battery naturally a current flows the electrons are going to flow in this particular direction and a current is going to flow in the opposite direction which is very less very low current okay so semiconductor in its pure value the pure condition or we call it as intersect semiconductor we call it as intersect semiconductor so semiconductor in its purest form is called as intersect semiconductor has very low current because the number of electrons in the conduction band is very less so let us study what is an intersect semiconductor so semiconductor in its purest form you call it as intersect semiconductor so in an intersect semiconductor you will be having holes positive holes holes means it is a vacancy of an electron. I'll draw the holes down. I'll tell you why. So holes that is vacancy of an electron you call it as vacancy of an electron you call it as a hole. Okay. What happens is when the electrons are excited what happens is the electron jump into the conduction band once it jumps into the conduction band what happens here a vacancy of an electron is created which you call it as a hole again the next electron jumps next electron jumps and again you have a vacancy over there that is a hole so the movement of the holes is in not in the conduction band it is in the valence band and the movement of the electrons are in the conduction band clear so you have number of holes and number of electrons which are equal in number you don't have in majority case or minority case they are equal in number when they are intersect semiconductor or semiconductor in its purest form has number of electrons is equal to number of holes clear i can put it something like this you have studied in the plus 2 electrical uh, subject 
you have studied that physics subject you have studied that that is n e into n x is equal to n i square because n e and n x is going to have the same value so you can put it as n i square okay let it be the now i have to increase the flow of electrons or i have to increase the current flow if i need to increase the current flow what should i do i should increase either the number of electrons or the number of holes okay so let us do some uh, process so that i can increase the number of electrons so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mix some impurity into the pure semiconductor okay so i'll mix a uh, pentavalent atom a pentavalent atom or a trivalent atom okay what do you mean by this pentavalent the outermost orbit consists of five electrons that is what we call it as pentavalent atom trivalent means the outermost orbit consists of three electrons this is outermost orbit how many electrons three electrons and this you have five electrons so pentavalent atom means the outermost orbit five electrons trivalent atom that means the outermost orbit consists of three electrons so i am going to mix an impurity into this so the process of adding this impurity you call it as doping what do you call it as doping d o p i n g doping the process of adding impurity to an inter six semiconductor pure semiconductor is called as doping so i am going to dope a pentavalent atom to an inter six semiconductor let us see what happens so i am going to dope a pentavalent atom that is doping means adding impurity pentavalent atom. the outermost orbit should consist of five electrons okay electrons so we have a germanium over here okay so this is going to combine you have a free electron over here see there is nothing to combine with this free electron over there and here again and pentavalent you have it is going to combine here we will be having germanium okay so this is going to compound and you have one free electron see so you have a free electron in every combination of this every combination of the bonding clear so that means i had a pure inter six semiconductor i had a pure semi inter six semiconductor pure inter six semiconductor the number of electrons is equal to number of holes I doped this inter six semiconductor with a pentavalent atom. What happened? I got extra electrons, right? Extra free electrons. So I got extra free electrons. See? Now what happened? There is an increment of electrons. That means now the majority carriers are electrons and the minority carriers are the holes. See? the majority carriers are the electrons and the minority carriers are the holes such type of material you call it as n type material okay so what do you mean by n type material when an inter six semiconductor is doped with a pentavalent atom we get an n type material
in an n type material the majority carriers are electrons and the minority carriers are the holes clear now i can increase the number of holes so that i can increase the flow of current so let me go for a trivalent atom okay so i'm going for a trivalent atom trivalent atom means what is the thing the outermost orbit consists of three electrons the outermost orbit consists of three electrons i have a germanium over here germanium here germanium going to get compact see here you don't have an electron over here to combine so that means a vacancy of an electron what does it mean vacancy of an electron means it is holes so again in the next combination again a hole will be created in the next combination again a hole will be created and it goes and so on so number of holes is increased okay so i had an intrinsic semiconductor i had an intrinsic semiconductor in the six semiconductor i doped with a trivalent atom what do you mean by doping adding impurity to a pure semiconductor is called as doping it is a or doping is a process of adding impurity to an in the six semiconductor okay so when i doped with a trivalent atom what is the need for doping what do you dope to increase the number of electrons or the number of uh, holes to in therefore i can increase the flow of current okay so now i go to the trivalent atom number of holes is increased see the number of holes is increased so now the majority carriers are the holes and the minority carriers are the electrons okay minority carriers are electrons and the majority carriers are the holes so now the current flow increases the current flow is in the same direction as that of the flow of holes and the current flow is in the opposite direction is considered as the opposite direction to the flow of electrons okay so such type of material we call it as p type material clear so semiconductor in its impure form semiconductors in impure form you have an n type material as well as a p type material we call it as extrinsic semiconductor So we have intrinsic semiconductor and extrinsic semiconductor. What do you mean by intrinsic semiconductor? Semiconductor in its purest form is called as intrinsic semiconductor. In an intrinsic semiconductor, the number of electrons is equal to the number of holes. The current flow is very less. To increase the current flow, what do we do? Doping. The process of adding impurity to a pure semiconductor or to an intrinsic semiconductor is called as doping. when i doped with a pentavalent atom i got an n type material in an n type material the majority carriers are electrons and minority carriers are holes when i doped an intrinsic semiconductor with a trivalent atom i got a p type material in a p type material the majority carriers are the holes and the minority carriers are the electrons are you clear with this so semiconductors in its impure form is called as extrinsic semiconductor two types p type and n type so now i have taught you what i mean by intrinsic semiconductor the first thing main thing you have important very very important semiconductor at absolute zero act as an insulator when i bring it to the room temperature it is going to get contact okay the bonds are going to get broken and going to conduct the flow of electrons are in the conduction band and the flow of holes are in the valence band okay this things we have to remember and then coming uh, i've taught you what do you mean by intrinsic semiconductor what do you mean by doping then p type material and n type material what is the need for doping what did you dope the semi intrinsic semiconductor to increase the flow of current by increasing the number of electrons or the number of holes okay clear so we we'll go for the next portion now So now let us come to the next topic P 
pn junction diode so now we are studying what is a p type material and what is an n type material. now i am going to fuse this p type material and an n type material okay let us fuse a p type material and an n type material i have a p type and an n type so this is p type and n type in p type material you have the majority carriers as the holes okay majority carriers are the holes I put till here and minority carriers are the electrons how can i get a p type material by doping with a trivalent atom now here n type material the majority carriers are electrons how do i get an n type material by combining with a pentavalent atom what do you mean by pentavalent atom the outermost orbit consists of five electrons what do you mean by a trivalent atom the outermost orbit consists of three electrons now i'll take a terminal out from this i'll take another one terminal This is what we call it as a p-n junction diode. We call it as a p-n junction diode. The simple is like this. This is the simple of a p-n junction diode. I can put it as K cathode. Usually in some books you see that. So this is a p-type and this is a n-type. This is p, this is n. Okay. So this is a uh, simple of a diode. Now. Let us discuss what are the operations what are going to happen over there when I fuse a p-type material with an n-type material. You see, positive holes, electrons, negative. Unlike charges, attract. What happens is the majority carriers, the holes, diffuses into the n-type material, combine with the electrons and become neutral. Similarly, the majority carriers the electrons combined with the diffuses into the p-type material, combined with the holes and become neutral. So that means there is a flow of current from p to n because the holes are flowing from p to n or the electrons are flowing from n to p. The electrons are flowing from n to p that means the current has to be in the opposite direction. And this current you call it as a diffusion current. You call it as a diffusion current. So it is a current due to the majority carriers. See, it is a current due to the majority carriers from P to N. Clear? So that is what you call it as diffusion current. Any doubt in it? Okay. Now the electrons come over here and become neutral. The holes come over here and become neutral. Clear. Now there will be some excess electrons. See, the electrons from the n-type material comes to the p-type material or diffuses into the p-type material and there is no hole to combine with. So, they are excess. And these excess electrons gets accumulated near the junction in the p-substrate. In the p-substrate. Similarly, the holes diffuses into the n-type material but there are no three electrons to combine with so they become excess and they gets accumulated in n type substrate near the junction okay see the excess electrons got accumulated at the junction in the p type substrate similarly the holes excess holes from the p type substrate gets accumulated in the end substrate near the junction which creates an electric field at the junction see you can one is negative and here is positive that means creating an electric field at the junction right so it creates an electric field at the junction okay so what happens there as the excess electron holes increases at the junction the electric field also increases. Once there is an electric field, there is a current flow. That is, the current flow 
is due to the excess charge carriers or the electric field created at the junction from n to p from n to p right from n to p this is what we call as a drift current so what do you mean by the drift current this is the drift current is a current which is caused due to the electric field at the junction created by the excess charge carriers and it flows from n to p that means it is opposite in direction to the diffusion current clear now what happens is at first when i fused a p type material with an n type material there was diffusion current and the current was from p to n it was a current due to the majority carriers it was very high and then you had the drift current as zero but once the excess charge carriers is going to get accumulated at the junction that is the electrons from the n type substrate gets accumulated the p type substrate the excess charge carrier near the junction similarly from the holes from the p type substrate the excess charge carrier gets accumulated in the n type substrate near the junction this causes an electric field over there and the excess charge carrier increases excess charge carrier increases and therefore the drift current increases the drift current increases see the drift current is going to increase due to the excess charge carriers due to the increase in excess charge carrier, and the diffusion current is going to increase decrease diffusion current is going to decrease okay and the excess charge carrier increases the diffusion current is going to decrease and the drift current is going to increase at a particular position in the equilibrium state the diffusion current is going to be equal to the drift current okay and that is the equilibrium state see first of all you had the diffusion current you had the drift current as zero this was very high as the excess charge carriers gets accumulated at the junction the drift current increases and the diffusion current decreases and at a point they are going to be equal and this is what we call as the equilibrium state and there is no flow of current the net current becomes zero the net current becomes zero this is the condition of a diode under unbiased condition unbiased state that is you are not going to give any external supply this is the condition so there is no flow of current during the unbiased condition clear so pn junction under unbiased i'll repeat once more you are fusing a p type material with an n type material the majority carries the holes diffuses into the n type material combined with the electrons and become neutral similarly the electrons from the n type material diffuse in the p type become neutral and this current due to the majority carriers is called as diffusion current which flows from p to n the excess charge carriers electrons from the n type substrate gets accumulated near the junction in the p type substrate similarly the excess charge carriers the holes from the p type substrates get accumulated in the n type substrate near the junction which causes an electric field which causes a current called drift current diffusion current and drift current are the opposite directions a particular time is reached where the diffusion current is equal to the drift current because the excess charge is going to increase and at that state the total current in the diode or in the pn junction is equal to zero therefore the diode under unbiased condition is equal to zero there is no current under unbiased condition are you clear in that okay now we will go to bias the conditions okay see i have drawn a pn junction diode under unbiased condition there is no flow of current these are the majority carriers minority carriers majority carriers the electrons in the n type substrate minority carriers the holes in the n type substrate these are the excess charge carriers the electrons in the p type substrate near the junction these are the excess holes in the n type substrate near the junction which created an electric field which created a drift current which created a 
potential barrier voltage because see I call it as a barrier what it is a barrier for the flow of holes and electrons it is a barrier for the flow of majority carriers so that is why there was no flow of current clear that's why called it as a barrier what type of barrier is created it created a potential see positive over here and negative so it created a potential barrier so i can put it as v p the potential barrier this created a junction which is deployed of mobile charges this region at the junction is deployed of mobile charge carriers which we call it as depletion region so depletion region is a region which is deployed of mobile charge carriers at the junction which is created due to the potential barrier voltage or due to the electric field created at the junction by the excess charge carriers clear so that is what is the depletion region means we have neutral atoms over there now i'm going to bias this pn junction diode i'm going to bias this pn junction diode so this is a simple right this is a simple you have I will connect a battery that is a positive terminal of the battery to the P type material and the negative terminal of the battery to the N type material. So this is a connection what do you do clear this is a circuit diagram what you are going to do the P type material the p type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the n type material n type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery it is going to have a v volt clear now let us see what happens the majority carriers the holes in the p type substrate is repelled by the positive terminal of the battery similarly the majority carriers the electrons are repelled by the negative terminal of the battery okay but the excess charge carriers the electrons in the p type substrate near the junction is attracted by the positive terminal of the battery that means the number of excess charge carriers is going to get reduced over there just because it is going to get attracted over here similarly the excess charge carriers the holes in the n type substrate near the junction gets attracted by the negative terminal of the battery which means that the number of holes is going to get reduced over there okay because it is attracted by the negative terminal so the excess charge carriers the electrons has decreased the excess charge carriers the holes also has decreased at the junction clear what happens then the depletion region width reduces you had some thousand electrons suppose thousand people are standing you need plenty of space but you have only ten persons then you need less space so naturally the depletion region width is going to get reduced the potential barrier voltage is going to get reduced the electric field strength is going to get reduced so what happens the majority carriers the holes diffuses into the n type and similarly the electrons diffuses into the p type which constitute a forward current from p to n p to and a forward current higher clear so the diode starts conducting the diode starts conducting so as i go on increasing the voltage naturally the current value is going to increase the depletion region width is also going to decrease depletion region width gets decreased when the voltage the biasing voltage is increased electric field strength reduces 
uh, potential barrier voltage reduces. Therefore, the current flow increases, the IF value increases. But always there is a small resistance offered by the depletion region. There is always a small resistance. It is not going to completely vanish in a practical diode. In a practical diode. Okay. In a practical diode, the depletion region does not vanish completely. There will be very narrow depletion region which constitutes small resistance. If you want, you can negligible. Negligible. Called the forward resistance of the diode. R. This is going to create a forward resistance of the diode. Very small resistance, very low value. Very low. So, I can put it as RF over here. A forward current IF flows, right? A forward current IF flows causing a small resistance RF. Okay, I will put it as small RF. Which you call it as the forward resistance of the diode. Forward resistance of the diode. So a current flows higher. So this is what you call it as a forward bias of a diode. I'll explain once more. The first thing what you have to mention is the p type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the n type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Therefore, the majority carriers the holes are repelled by the positive terminal of the battery and the majority carriers the electrons are repelled by the negative terminal of the battery. But the excess charge carriers the electrons in the p type substrate near the junction is attracted by the positive terminal of the battery and the majority carriers the holes in the n type material near the junction is going to get attracted by the negative terminal of the battery which what the width of the depletion region decreases two the electric field strength reduces three the potential barrier voltage reduces by increasing the biasing voltage which causes a flow of current called the forward current flows from p to n as the voltage biasing voltage increase the forward current increases but it offers a small resistance the depletion region width reduces the resistance value offered the barrier offered reduces but to a limit a very small value it shows which you call it as a forward resistance of the diode clear this is a pn junction diode under forward bias condition so under forward bias a diode conducts clear now i will go into the reverse bias of a diode see i have drawn a diode under un, uh, unbiased condition now i am going for reverse bias pn junction diode under reverse bias Bias. So let us go for the circuit. How to connect the circuit? The p type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery, and the n type is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Clear? It is connected to the positive terminal of the battery, and I have a voltage V. Clear? Now let us draw a diode. See, this is the diode. And the connect. The P type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. The N type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Okay. The majority carriers, the holes, are attracted by the negative terminal of the battery. Similarly, the majority carries electrons in the n-type substrate is attracted by the positive terminal of the battery. But the excess charge carriers, the electrons, the excess charge carriers, the electrons at the junction in the p-type substrate is repelled by the negative terminal of the battery, is repelled by the negative terminal of the battery. 
similarly the majority carriers the holes sorry they are not the majority carriers the excess charge carriers the excess charge carriers the holes in the n type substrate near the junction gets repelled by the positive terminal of the battery i'll tell once more the p type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery the n type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery clear the majority carriers the holes are attracted by the negative terminal of the battery and the majority carriers the electrons are attracted by the positive terminal of the battery but the excess charge carriers the electrons in the p type substrate near the junction is repelled by the negative terminal of the battery like charge ripple similarly the excess charge carriers the holes in the n type substrate near the junction is repelled by the positive terminal of the battery which one increases the depletion region to the potential barrier voltage increases the electric field strength increases as the negative reverse voltage is increased okay or the biasing voltage is increased so what happens the barrier voltage is increased the resistance is going to be increased so naturally there is no flow of electron holes majority carriers electron flows are not happening over there so therefore there is no current so totally the current becomes zero that means under reverse bias condition there is no flow of current in a diode but there is a small current which is negligible caused by the minority carriers this one see the minority carriers the minority carriers they start flowing which you call it as the reverse saturation current you call it as a reverse saturation current which flows from n to p which flows from n to p now i told you three currents one you call it as a drift one you call it as diffusion current then the next one was drift current the third was the reverse saturation current so three currents are flow so there is a current flow which is very negligible you can take it as zero in practical case you can take it as zero okay the small current very small current which flows from n to p so it flows from n to p i can put it as i not very small here there will be a resistance r f high the depletion region resistance over there the resistance of the diode is very high a small current will be flowing i not resistance we can put it as r r if you want whatever it is the small resistance offered over there is high clear this is the diode under reverse bias condition okay now i taught you what the diode is under diode okay p n junction diode under unbiased condition there is no flow of current because diffusion current is equal to drift current okay you know what is diffusion current you know what is drift current what is diffusion current diffusion current is due to the flow of majority carriers which flows from p to n what is drift current drift current is the current due to the electric field created at the junction by the excess charge carriers which flows from n to p diffusion current and drift current both are in the opposite directions in an unbiased condition when the diffusion current becomes drift current the diode current becomes zero so under unbiased condition what happens there is no flow of current now next one was forward bias the p type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the n type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery the majority carriers are repelled by the positive and negative terminal of the batteries 
and the excess are the carriers gets attracted therefore the potential barrier voltage reduces the electric field reduces the depletion region width reduces and there is a flow of current from p to n which is called as a forward current of the diode and there is small resistance offered by the diode which is called as a forward resistance of the diode which is negligible the next thing what i have worked on is the reverse bias condition under reverse bias condition the n type material is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the p type material is connected to the negative terminal of the battery therefore the majority carriers are gets attracted by the positive and negative terminal of the batteries respectively and uh, the excess charge carriers which created the junctions are repelled by the positive and negative terminal of the batteries which increases the potential barrier voltage the electric field strength is increased then what happens the depletion region width also increases therefore there is no flow of majority carriers therefore there is no flow of current but a small current flows which is the current due to the minority carriers from n to p which you call it as the reverse saturation current okay now these are the conditions which i talked about the forward bias reverse bias and unbiased condition for a practical diodes now i'll go for ideal diodes what do you mean by ideal diodes it is very simple thing it is theoretically but not practically possible so i'll go for an ideal diode what is an ideal diode? so a practical diode this is a practical diode you have r of value low and a current flows i this is the condition under forward bias forward bias ideal diode forward bias this is a practical diode when you come to an ideal diode this r of value becomes zero r of is equal to zero which means it is a short circuit this is the electrical equivalent of an ideal diode okay that is the forward bias condition now i'll go for a reverse bias condition ideal diode under reverse bias so what i have to do and here what is the thing i am in the opposite direction and this is i know this is a practical diode and this one high very high now when i come to an ideal diode when i come to an ideal diode r of is equal to infinity r of is equal to infinity therefore there is no flow of current i not is equal to zero this is a condition for an ideal diode under reverse bias condition so a diode a practical diode and an ideal diode practical diode and an ideal diode let us compare so the current i okay current I, practical diode i am okay ideal diode maxima this is under forward bias condition okay this is under 
forward bias condition. The resistance value, the resistance value, practical diode are low. This is zero. You can put it as short circuit. Now, I will go for reverse bias condition, reverse bias condition. Practical and ideal current, practical diode, there is a small flow of current I naught very small okay this is zero for an ideal diode it is zero the resistor practical high here it is infinity which means open circuit so what does it mean so an ideal diode act as open circuit open circuit in reverse bias condition, reverse bias condition and act as short circuit in forward bias condition. This is what you call it as an ideal diode. Now you understand what is a practical diode and what is an ideal diode. Okay. So, these are the things forward bias and uh, reverse bias all those things. Now, I have to go for the VI characters. For the rest of the uh, classes, you can uh, uh, go for uh, the app from the Play Store. You can download the app from the Play Store that is Expert 360 Play Store which is given in the descriptions. You can have and you can have the complete class of basic electronics as well as analog electronics over there.